Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And of course, um, uh, we're moving on to our first major conversation right here um, on the program. Indeed, uh, the All Progressives Congress has been having its, um, its own internal issues. And of course, you have um, the presidential aspirants also saying things about the, the party and getting into um, uh, conversations and consultations ahead of the 2023 presidential elections and one of and one of those who um, has been making those consultations and visits happens to be Bola Ametinbu, um, the so-called leader of the All Progressives Congress. Well, um, he has been to the Senate, the National Assembly, to visit senators and to you know sell himself to them. Um, we're hearing that the All Progressives Congress Senate Caucus has assured the national leader of the party, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, of their support for his presidential ambition. Tinubu was at the National Assembly to consult and seek the support of lawmakers who are members of the ruling party for his aspiration to emerge the presidential candidate of the party and president of the country in 2023. Tinubu called on the APC Senate caucus to support him to become the candidate of the party for the 2023 presidential election. The former Lagos governor has said he came to the Senate to seek the counsel, partnership and support of the APC senators in actualizing his presidential ambition come 2023. Now we'll be rolling a tape and uh, let's listen to what was said and what transpired at that meeting between APC senators and the national leader of the party it's about a change of leadership that I mentioned to Mr. President and my ambition. And I told him, my ambition is not blind to the extent that I will step on his toes. I just want to step into his shoe and not on his toes. Nigeria will remain united in my period. And we will use that unity, the symbol of our party, stay as one to cleanse of Nigeria of unrealizable potential. It's taking too long. I believe that at the end of the day, Your Excellency will all the time continue to support our party recently we have had difficulty because of misunderstanding between some of our members and the party has been thrown into a temporary uh, confusion but thank god it is over now it is very clear that our party is back on track, that at the end of the day, in the next two weeks or so, our national convention will hold and a new set of leaders will emerge who will take us to the destination of victory by the grace of God in 2023. Interesting involvement uh, now joining us to analyze this and uh, look at the implications for the All Progressives Congress um, and of course the 2023 presidential race is political analyst Ezekiel Inyaitok who joins us for a second time this morning. Once again, good morning to you Ezekiel Inyaitok. What a wonderful day it is for me. Thank you for having yes, me indeed. again. Yes, indeed. Um, um, the, the video, you know, shows the Senate President, he didn't sound so are supportive, but the report is that he is saying to um, the APC caucus is saying to uh, Shiwaju, "We are with you." Um, is this an endorsement of his presidential ambition? And if so, is Tinubu the man to beat as far as the presidential aspirants in the APC are concerned? Two things. The very first is that um, I can talk to you politically, which is speaking loud and saying nothing. The second is that we could have a conversation that Nigerians would like to listen to and take what I call informed decision. The very first thing is that this was something that was recorded for the public. 
And because it was recorded for the public, it was absolutely necessary for the Senate caucus to give the impression that the party is together. And if you listen to what the Senate president said, he said they will always support their party. That's what he said. He did say they will support Tinubu, you know. That's the first one. And secondly, he, uh, I believe that the script writers for, um, um, for uh, Obong Tinubu uh, for a, 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 an important event as this would have been a little more um, tactful in, in giving him the lines, you know, because he tried to do something with stepping on his toes and stepping into his shoes. You know, and I'm asking myself, is that for the public or is that for Mr. President? If it was for Mr. President, is that really necessary? That could have been a different forum. But if it's something that he wanted to have for the public, th there's a way it could have been presented. And actually, his speech was more of an indictment on the seven years of the administration of his party. Because it's like, look, this has gone on for too long. You know, so it's not about building on, on, on legacies that you can put forward as per we've done this much and we want to take it a notch higher or the direction that we are addressing is was the current problem. Now that we have been able to take care of insurgency, which was the main direction that we were pursuing, we, we need somebody who has the capacity to handle the second leg, which has to be the economy. And that is where I am primed because of my antecedents to be able to do that. And again, because I'm somebody over the years that has been known as kind of the father of the youth, you know, I want to be able to bring what they call responsibility transfer. I want to be the door opener, which brings the youth into governance because this issue of average age of governance being in their 60s is not okay. So let's, I want to bring this very specific program to be able to do this. And I'm primed over the years. And for me, if I can deliver that as my last assignment, it will be something that I will feel fulfilled about. So what do Nigerians hear? They hear, number one, that, well, uh, we have been doing war, 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 and we are dying, but this man is coming to now face the economy. He's going to make us come back to life, revive the industries and everything. That affects me personally. That makes, makes me feel good. Secondly, we hear that this man says that the average age is not okay. Rather, he wants to come and be the door opener that brings the young people into governance and hand over to them what he, what he calls responsibility transfer to the youth. So the youth are like, whoa, this makes sense to me. I'm going to like to hear more about this man. You need, when, when you are talking, you need to know the ad audience you are addressing and the message for that audience, especially if you are honest and sincere. So the young people couldn't care less whether he is 50 or 90 or 70, like Joe Biden, they'll see them as the man, they think of themselves as the man who is going to help them. But when you come to Nigeria and tell us, um, sorry, my son name E.T. OK, not E.Y. OK. When, 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 you, when you come to Nigerians and tell us, this is my lifelong ambition, at the time I have no food on my table, at the time I cannot pay my children's school fees, I'm asking myself, so I should go out and vote to fulfill your lifelong ambition. I mean, it's a long, it's a wrong, um, you know, it, it's a wrong presentation. Okay. especially now that votes are going to count at the polls. Well, the votes are going to count at the polls, but uh, today you're having two-thirds of Nigeria's representative votes in the upper and uh, the lower chambers endorsing him to succeed President Muhammad Buhari. And he went as far as having, you know, the verified Twitter handle of the House of Reps on the microblogging form. I mean, we're talking about Twitter now putting out those pictures and putting out this statement and in, you know, sort of some kind of endorsement. <laughs> what, I mean, some people would say that this is actually the deal. I mean, it feels like it's game over already. I'll tell you, in, in economics, there's what you call effective demand. Okay? Who is endorsing you? People who are not sure of getting votes when they go back home, they're endorsing you. And then you are clapping for yourself. How many of them do you think will return to the National Assembly? How many? 
So you can be you can be clapping for yourself on something that uh, you know it's like somebody writes a check for you and you are very happy to have a check. You don't ask yourself, does that person have any money in the in the bank? The very first thing you do is make sure that he has enough money in the bank. If I write you, me as I sit down here, I write you a three billion naira check. Forget it, it's a waste of time. I don't have any such money. So it's not enough to have your check, my check in your hands. It's more important to know whether that that is is cash backed. It's like budget. We do a lot of budget, but you see, those are just statements of intention. A lot of our budget, why we fail is because they are not they are not cash backed. You know, at the, at the end at the end of the day, you just discover that you have fifty percent performance because we didn't have the money we're talking about. Coming back to the people at the National Assembly, the first thing you should tell me is that how many of them can go back to their constituencies to seek a, a, a return? So that, that endorsement, as far as I'm concerned, is political. It's like somebody coming, you know, we have these groups, that group, that group, that, you know, one of the, you know, I'm campaigning. So one of the groups came to me and they said, oh, we have over, you know, uh, 200,000 members with PVC and everything. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, let's do something. Let me have your, uh, your membership list. They brought it. I said, okay, fine. Let's do a random. Let me just pick some numbers at random and call and them see. They say, you know, eh, that, that is not the correct list. Eh, we made a mistake. We bring your analysis and I smile. I said, I've done this thing before, guys. You know, talk about yourself. Those who have 200,000 members, we will look at them and they'll understand. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that don't be fooled by this flurry of endorsement because the person that is endorsing A, the same person is endorsing B, the same person is endorsing C. It's just like when you look at all these party rallies and you see the crowd, do a synthetic analysis of that crowd. You discover that the crowd that was there at a PDP rally is the same crowd that is there at APC rally. It's the same crowd that is there. That is why ADC does not believe in all this crowd. We want one man to man, you know, one on one. That's what we are doing. Okay. Town hall meetings and getting across. So I think that having the endorsement of the National Assembly is good for the media. It's good for the talk. It's good to the extent that it's making news and we are talking about it. So there's an indirect gain, you know, gain that is making because it makes it makes it newsworthy. And the more newsworthy um, items you have the more the publicity inadvertently that you have. So on that score, I think that he's making a good political inroad. But in terms of the effectiveness of the endorsement, no, no, no. To me, All right. it doesn't count much weight. It doesn't count. Oh, uh, um, is Ashiwaju, uh, the Jagaban Bogo, as he is titled, um, not, is, is, is this painting him not to be as an astute a politician as we all think he is? or majority of people think he is, because um, you're a politician and uh, you've contested an election before. I'm sure you know exactly I took that. You know, these, these guys do not want to see you visiting them, you know, officially in broad daylight to talk about um, um, seeking their partnership for a better Nigeria, you know, to make the country better. If they were interested in making the country better, we won't be where we are. Um, a still Come, you know, is this playing him out or painting him to be not as astute as we, we think he is in, in politics, you know? Let me tell you something. I've said this before and I say it again. We have not understood how politics has been run over the years. I'll tell you something. Tinubu could win the presidency if the politics of before it was allowed to continue. It was a politics of money. It was a politics of money. All you need to do is have enough money in almost the 120,000 polling units. Some of these people, all you need is just take two thirds of it, do a very good analysis and put your people in the past. This is very important. You understand where I'm coming from. What happens in the past is that when you have 1,000 people at the polling unit, you have an understanding with the officials. That understanding means buying them. You can, you can do that. You could do that. So they send in about when you said materials didn't come on time, there was delay in materials. It is the game. Okay. At the end of the day, 
out of 1,000 polling um, um, registered members, you do accreditation for just about 300. Okay? Now, they finish voting and all those things, you don't care, you just get some money around, get some votes, let it give the impression that, you know, there was a voting. The real game comes between the polling unit where the policemen enter the van uh, or the car and then your um, election officers enter and then the party people somewhere along the line before they get to the coalition officer the car is packed money is shared a new form is brought out that polling unit 1000 votes are recorded complete 1000 votes out of the 1,000 votes, you give to yourself maybe 900,000 and your closest opponent. You make sure that you beat him silly so that he does not even have the mouth to open his mouth and complain. So at the end of the day, you can do this in virtually every polling unit if you have money. And Jagaban is known to have money. But something has shifted fundamentally. And this shift is what Nigerians need to know. The game avenue has been blocked by President Buhari, Buhari God bless his soul, by that Electoral Act 2022. In the Electoral Act, you don't need to send 300 forms there because whatsoever the beavers captures is the only thing that will be reported you cannot go and print again for the others and put in bogus figures because the figure at the polling unit covered by the beavers is exactly the figure that is going to be sent to abuja and unless you are such a terrible fool you will not pay anybody to alter any figure because those figures will not stand. So you don't need to waste your, your money as a politician. And you, the returning officer or collecting officer, you don't need to collect money because they are going to know the truth and you are going to be sent to jail. So both the giver and the receiver stand a risk that does not even make sense, except they are stupid people. So that is a fundamental shift. Now, within that context, Mr. Tinubu, Obong Tinubu, Obong is a very respected title within my area. So for me to call him that, you know, I call him. In fact, maybe I should call him Otuekong because I'm an Otuekong, which is the highest title you can have. Okay. What he should ask himself is do a, an analysis that, that tells him what Nigerians think of him. That result, and he, he shouldn't do it with people who, who know that he is the one. He should go to University of Calabar, University of Uyo, University of Maiduguri, through a proxy, get people to send people around the country and do analysis of top five people that Nigerians would like to support. That will give him a very honest, poor, reflective indices. And before he reads the result, he should have his doctor by his side because he's going to be either extremely happy or extremely sad. But it could help him to find out why the result is that way. If it is positive, reinforce it. If it is negative, think of how you can reverse those thoughts. Think of things you can do. Being seen as a man who has money at a time like this is okay. not what will help him in Nigeria. So, but let's come down to, I mean, it's a good thing that you talked about uh, the fundamentals. So, so let's stick with the fundamentals. We know that uh, before you, of course, you have to belong to a pol political party and uh, you have to become a flag bearer. The issue of him becoming a flag bearer, we understand all of the crisis and the issues going on right now in the APC. And even though you still have some persons in the APC 
who have not indicated their interest. But of course, there are words on the street saying one or two persons, I mean, there probably might be seven for whatever reason, I'd not like to mention their names. But you have him who's actually said, yes, his communicator is concerned, you know, to Mr. President, he's yet to let Nigerians know. But of course, Nigerians watch him say, communicating his interest to the president. And of course, uh, there's also a visit to the lawmakers uh, who have actually endorsed him. So do you see him becoming the flag bearer of the APC? I, I'll, I'll tell you this about becoming the flag bearer of the APC. The, I'll tell you straight up, I see him, I see that possibility. Clean, clear. I have a very, very uh, interesting, very, very good relationship. This was supposed to be, well, it's not really private. There's nothing confidential about it. With um, Alaji Kwankwaso. He's a very, very good friend. In fact, on my birthday, he actually came and spent three days with me in Uyo, which was awesome. But he said something that I found very interesting. He said, if I go for primaries with Tambual, he will beat me. If I go for primaries with Tinubu, he will beat me. If I go with, for primaries, he put about four people with them, primaries, they will beat him. But all of them put together cannot beat him in election. Do you understand me? That shows you the weakness that parties have at primaries. They fail to realize that you must bring a candidate that is going to be accepted by the people to get the ticket of APC in, you know, by 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 Obongtinibu is as simple as ABC because of the way it works. The delegate, he has he has a good will. He's seen as somebody that has the capacity to bring the money, you know, for them. It's not money to run election, the money for all the so-called stakeholders, all those, you know, the owners of structures. They are just thinking of who they can collect money from. Whether you fail or you don't fail, that's your business. He is seen as somebody who has money to bring and give them. If, if you want to buy the delegate at 5 million, at 2 million, he's seen as one person that has that capacity. So he can get the ticket of the party. But the party leadership ought to go back home. As of today, APC is government in power. They have governors all over the country. So if the chairman of the party was somebody that was forward thinking, long before today, they would have done an offline strategic analysis of their top five as accepted by the people because in the current electoral act, I could not say this enough, the people are going to decide. Why do you want to bring your friend that will fail election rather than your enemy that will pass election? And in party politics, once you are a stakeholder, you are a stakeholder, whoever comes up, you are going to be relevant. So I think that what we are doing in ADC, for instance, is we are looking at people that are loved by the people. And we're going to be able to sit down in some places. We are actually going to approach people and say, please come and run on our platform. You don't need to pay. You don't need to do this. Maybe I'm letting the cat out of the bag because we want people that are loved, accepted, appreciated. Why do you think ADC would want to have me in a quiet bomb? When you talk about people who have money, I'm like Boy Scout. But please call <laughs> 10 people. Yeah, yeah, call 10 people in a five bomb out of 10. Say, who do you love on all these things? If you have less than eight who say, yeah, I talk, we love him, then throw me away. That's why ADC can take the risk and say, look, we go with this guy. You know, it, it, it said us. So, what you do is APC should have done that strategic analysis to look at people instead of wanting to sell forms. 20 million, 20 million, 20 million. You sell forms to and collect three, four, five billion and you lose the presidency. Does it make sense? It's not, it's not cerebral thinking. Yeah, it's clearly yeah, it's interesting. Uh, uh, um, let's still stick with Ash Ashiwaju and the analysis of him and his chances. Um, looking at the response, I know, you know some of the papers, including the Nation newspaper, said that the National Assembly, the APC, Senate said they're with him. But you, you pointed out you know, the statement, the words of um, Ahmed Lawan, you know, to Tinubu. Of course, he wasn't expected to say, expect to say anything other. And he said that, oh, we support you, wish you well. I think that's the headline or the words that should have been used by the papers, wish you well. But let's look at Tinubu's um, influence in the scheme of things 
as far as the government of the day is concerned and as far as the, uh, the APC is concerned. He's been called the national leader of the party. Um, he doesn't occupy any appointed or elected position. He hasn't occupied that since they came to power. But he was instrumental in forming the APC, the key um, 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 character, if you want to call it that. But um, going by the activities and the intrigues in the government, in the party over the past few months, would you say the influence and the power of Tinubu is waning? Is waning. That's number one. Number two, what are your thoughts on the talk of his age and um, his um, stoutness uh, to occupy this position? And it, it was just a, something to just, you know, uh, uh, fulfill a righteousness, uh, say something nice to him, and then let him go. Do they really believe that he can, he can do, uh, can emerge at the end of the day? Let me put it that way. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you two things. The first thing is that um, um, you, you, you are people have a saying that the blood in the mouth is such that you don't want to swallow it. You know, assuming you have um, like um, a cut, you have a bleeding, and the blood is in your mouth. You don't want to swallow it, and at the same time, you don't want to spit it out because there's a sentimental attachment of some 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 sort. You know, things like that. You know, is a saying. You see, you cannot write off Tinubu. You can't. You can't write him off. You can't. APC knows that. Without Tinubu, they've lost the Southwest. And you remember that my our Oga Buari, who is now my friend, you know, he, he had contested three times without winning with the 10, 12 million votes from the North. He needed Tinubu to bring the capacity of the Southwest. And over these past seven years, the party has not been able to think beyond Tinubu, and they've not been able to think beyond Buhari. But, but, it, but there seems to be cracks. I mean, even in that Southwest, look at what uh, someone like no, Arabe no, Shola no. has been saying to Tinubu. It would have been unthinkable two years ago let that Arabe Shola would me. address Tinubu like that. We look at uh, even me. his protege uh, or his ally, uh, the vice president. Let me let me tell you something. You see, talking in the media and acting on ground. You see, there's a difference between trailer and the B2. They're not the same. A little child can sit down. He doesn't know how to run. He doesn't know how to, he's just crawling. Yes, yeah, the big man. Yes, yeah, the big man. He can say that. And then the news is, oh, this little child or this man called the other guy. It's just like me. You know, I can talk a lot of things about Samuel Peters or Mike Tyson or Mayweather. I can rant more than even them. Before they say one, I can say five. They put two of us on the ring. Then you go see, say, that mouth where they talk. Do you get the point? When you go to the field, tell me one man in the Southwest that can beat the capacity of Tinubu. Tinubu is a wet any day, any time as far as the Southwest is concerned. If I was not involved very seriously in a party like ADC, I would have offered myself free to Tinubu as, as a strategic advisor to him. Because, you see, long before today, Tinubu knew he had this ambition and all his branding was money man, money man, money man. And that is not the branding you take to election where you have the electoral act that we have. He would have been seen as these people that people love. What are the activities that he moved and went to a youth program in Akwaibom? He went and did this program in, 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 in Bayelsa. He went before now to show that, look, do you know that if the youth are to vote between Tinubu and a man like Elumelu, Elumelu has over the years set up himself as somebody who is out to empower the youth and a better their lot. Don't always tell me I have money, I have money, I have money. Money has failed us because the day you become a president, the money you have becomes irrelevant. Oh. It's what you have between your ears and in your heart that is important to the people. Well, and the people have been, yes, been well, disappointed for so long that yeah. they have woken up. What, what, about, what about the talk of his, his uh, health, his age, and um, his ability to, to remain fit, you know, both physically and, uh, you know, otherwise, to, to 
um, to, to be the president. And I've heard some people saying things like, oh, affliction shall not rise a second time. Sorry to put it that way, um, but I'm just yeah. you know, re-echoing what I've heard yeah. people say. Um, yeah. what, what do you say to that? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something. A lot of times we really don't understand what it means to run the presidency or the governorship of a country. You can be, you can be, you can be physically challenged and still an effective leader. The very first thing we need to hear from you is that you have a heart and love for the people. A heart, passionate love for the people. Number two, you have a vision, not for yourself and your ambition, but for the people. And once the nation comes to see and buy this, which should have been sold long before today, he can, he can be accommodated. But now, can I see that? Maybe me, different. Can I see the, the vision? Maybe not. And to worsen the matter, he is an old man. And to worsen the matter again, he's not fitting, feeling in our own opinion as fit as we would want him to be. So my question is, what is the unique selling point? What are his strategies thinking? How can they come and what they are sending out to the public is sympathy for him to fulfill his lifelong ambition? Who are those collecting this man's money and not thinking for the man? If you collect his money, at least think for him and lay the strategic foundations where to get a ticket in, a, in APC is not for me, it's not very difficult. Not very difficult for me to see, to get a ticket by Tinubu, but to come out and then convince Nigerians to vote for him. When Nigerians have such options that ADC is going to put forward, and when they do, and these guys hit the ground running based on things that resonate with the young people, I, it's going to be a hard sell at the end of the day. That's what I think. For me, it is like not laying a foundation for his ambition. He has a lot of money, and being perceived as money man, money man, money man, is not, it wasn't a good thing. Yes, be a money man, but be a lover, a darling of the young people. Be a passionate believer in Nigeria. Show me. Ask yourself, when last the Tinubu come to Akwaibon where I stay? Just to attend a program. Just to attend a wedding. Just to attend a youth program. Just to do an empowerment thing there. As an individual. These are the ways you prepare yourself for an election where you know that Buhari, maybe they didn't see this coming. But Buhari, God bless him. With this electoral act, you need a man that is loved by the people, not somebody who has money. We're going to see for the first time when somebody you called a beetle is going to floor somebody you called a trailer. Azika and Yaito, thank you so much for being part of the show. We do appreciate your thoughts and we appreciate you uh, all the time. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. I appreciate the two of you. God bless you all. Ezekiel Yaitok is a public affairs analyst and uh, we will call it a wrap at this point and that's because we need to head straight to our second conversation just before the top of the hour, 9 o'clock. Stay with us.